Welcome back to Pocket Train's Precision Scheduled Edition once again. A few months ago, I made a video about Pocket Trains and kind of my sort of operation that I've got going on in this game, and of course, the whole PSR thing, and that video ended up doing pretty well, so here we go again looking at what has changed in my train operations since then, uh, what's been going on, and also just a little bit of talk about PSR along the way. So, I might as well begin this by saying that I still play Pocket Trains on and off. I haven't been playing it for the entire time since the last video, but I have been playing it a little bit every now and then, and I have made some pretty good progress, which is um, part of what I'm going to be talking about. Um, also, by the way, if you want to check out the last video, I'll have it in the description, description so you can see uh, how things started off and how things have changed now. And some of my changes are just small things like adding new trains that I didn't have a few months ago. Um, just small uh, improvements like that. But um, the main focus of my operation is, of course, the freighters, which are the uh, basically most powerful engines in the game. If you can get three of them lashed up, you can pull 28 cars, which by this game standards is pretty good. And I kind of, I wouldn't say cheated, but I don't know if it's exactly what the developers intended. Um, I did what I'm calling my little PSR operation. And I call it PSR because it's not exactly like real world precision scheduled railroading. Like I'm not physically combining multiple trains into one massive train like you can't physically couple multiple trains together in this game but i can get relatively close by like having multiple trains running on the same line at the same time uh to in the same direction kind of which in this game one of the big ideas is that each train has its own individual route and line that's why they're all color-coded, and they run on their own line, and if you want one train to run on another train's line, you gotta pay a certain amount of in-game money. But of course, that's the basis of my whole operation, where I have multiple freighters all operating on the same line. Of course, I gotta pay quite a bit of money to make that work, but uh, I have managed to turn a profit from it so that the earnings that I get from running multiple trains on the same line has outweighed the operation costs. Um, so that's kind of like PSR in my opinion, because it's technically making trains longer by like running more cars on a single network, I guess. I don't know. But um, in talking about changes that have occurred, uh, the first time that I tried this out... I had three freighters running on the same line from uh, Los Angeles to Paris, and I think since then I've uh, expanded the line to Kiev, and um, I had three freighters running on that line. Uh, there was the, I believe, Delaware freighter, there was the New Jersey freighter, which I renamed to the Quebec freighter because, come on, it's Canadian National. But since then, I have re-renamed it to the Louisiana Freighter because um, the freighter line that I have, which is in orange, doesn't even run through Canada, but it does run through Louisiana, and Canadian National runs through Louisiana. I mean, it's the former Illinois Central, but I mean, it's close enough, I guess. So that's the Louisiana Freighter. And then there was the Virginia Freighter. But since then, I have acquired two more freighters to run that line. I've gotten the Georgia Freighter, which is basically a second Delaware Freighter, but I've just renamed it to Georgia Freighter so that you can tell them apart. And then we have the new kid on the block, the Maryland Freighter, which is a, another type of freighter in this game, and it's actually called the Maryland Freighter. I haven't renamed it yet, although I will say it does bear a slight resemblance to Union Pacific engines, so... I don't know if that might have to do with renaming, but um, we'll just see. I haven't renamed it yet. I might keep it as Maryland for now. And I also have one more freighter line, which I'll talk a little more about in a bit. Uh, and it runs from Caracas all the way to Adelaide in Australia. And this is another freighter line. It's only operated by one freighter, the Brazil freighter, which is kind of like the Georgia freighter. Another Virginia freighter, but I renamed it 
so that you can tell which is which. And that's the only one running on that line because as of right now, the demand on that line, there isn't as much traffic moving on that line. So it still needs one freighter, but I think for now one can do the job just fine. But um, we're going to be talking about that in a little bit, why that line only needs one freighter, but the Paris to Los Angeles line needs five. And since then, another similarity between real PSR and my little operation is, of course, the money. I have made a lot of money since the last Pocket Trains video. Back then, I was at about 4.2 million coins. And now, as of recording this, I'm at 6.4 million coins. So that's an increase of 2 million, which is pretty good. Especially because that is totally the only reason that I've done this. Am I right? I am definitely only making these long trains for money and money alone. Am I right? World domination is within my grasp. If you couldn't tell, that was rhetorical. And that's yet another thing I'm going to be talking about. How um, making these trains longer has benefits besides the stockholders. It can help people other than the stockholders on Wall Street, in my opinion. And I kind of want to just like talk about that because in my opinion, it's kind of a misconception where it's like, yes, long trains make money, but sometimes it's like, it's treated like that's the only thing that they can do. But I, I believe that there are other benefits to them besides this, which I'm kind of kind of, kind of trying to convey in this video and how I've been playing this game. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, first off, let's just talk about our operations here. So we have the five freighters, which are in Paris, and they are all heading to Los Angeles. Of course, I have to send them out one at a time, and they kind of have to do a bit of a leapfrog thing almost, because unfortunately in this game, you can only run like one train on a certain route at a time. So they kind of have to go separate, but I mean, like they're all headed in the same overall direction. They're all headed to Los Angeles and they're all headed in the same direction. So that's close enough for me. And it, that's another big similarity between PSR in this game versus real world PSR. They both involve the idea of having like as many rail cars moving as possible, like increasing tonnage, stuff like that reducing the amount of cars left in rail yards, which isn't exactly a bad thing, in my opinion, which is something I wanted to talk about. So let's just talk about that first off. Let's talk about um, the whole thing of keeping um, freight cars moving. Now, obviously, you can't completely get rid of freight yards. There are times when these yards really are needed, and... Even in this game, that's true because, like, I've upgraded quite a lot of my freight yards. Like, Paris Yard, for instance, is, I think, 25 to 30 cars. So I've upgraded that thing quite a bit. Because in the way that Pocket Trains works is, if you want to upgrade a freight yard's capacity, you basically have to pay in-game currency to upgrade it by five cars each time. So I've upgraded... Uh, some of these yards quite a few times to get them to where they are today and that has definitely paid off so I agree that like yards are important and when people say that like PSR has been killing off freight yards yeah stuff like that I can see how that's a problem and I mean yeah freight yards are definitely important but at the same time that doesn't mean that long trains need to be absolutely eradicated and um, that's kind of the whole overlying idea that I'm thinking about here, like, long trains, when they are done too frequently, yeah, that can be bad. It's not like every single train possible must be combined. It's not like every single train must be a two-mile PSR monster. I agree that, yeah, it's, um, this can be done, and it has been done excessively from time to time, and obviously that's not good, but at the same time, it's not like we should be, like, absolutely eradicating long trains and making sure that they never happen again and just, like, making them extinct. Like, I don't think that this has to be all black and white, where every train must be either 17,000 feet or 7,000 feet 
One of the two, no in between. I don't think that that's how we should be looking at American freight trains. Because when done in moderation, I think that these long trains can really be beneficial. And, like, you have to be strategic about it, kind of. Because, like I said, you can't be, like, doing it excessively. You can't be combining every single train possible just for the heck of it. There has to be genuine reasoning other than money. And I think that there can be, as I kind of hope that I've shown in this game. Now, Pocket Trains obviously works a bit differently to real-world railroading, but there are a few similarities here and there, I think. Um, especially strategy, like Pocket Trains is a quite a strategy-based game, in my opinion. And one of the big things that I think these longer trains have helped with is clearing out yards. I said how... Um, the Brazil freighter is the only freighter on its line, while there are like five freighters between Paris and LA. That's because there is a bunch of traffic that runs on the Paris to LA line, because of course you have freight cars coming in from North America and South America, and it's all heading on that one line off to Europe and Australia and Asia. So if you have that much cargo moving on that line, of course you're, you're going to need to have to keep up with the demand, and if you're trying to keep up with the demand, you can do basically three things. You can either increase the capacity of your yard so that it can take in uh, the massive flow of traffic, but of course that costs money. I mean, it needs to be done, and I have done it. Like, I've upgraded quite a few of my yards on this line, but it does cost quite a bit of money to constantly be upgrading them to handle more traffic capacity. Um, you can just outright deny shipments, like, just stop bringing anything in so that where you are at, like, just leave it at a standstill with nothing else flowing in, which, I mean, it would stop the backlog, but hypothetically, I'd imagine that there would be shippers behind this. Of course, you don't interact with shippers in pocket trains, you just see the car loads appearing on the jobs list and you just take them. There isn't really an interaction with the shipper involved, but I'd imagine that hypothetically there would be one behind the scenes if we're applying this to like real railroading. So you can't just outright deny the shipment because that would lead to a lot of unhappy customers if the railroad's just like, just saying, nah, we're not taking it. That would not be good. Or you can increase your capacity by making the trains longer, because the longer the train, the more cargo that they can carry at one time, which is kind of why I have run this many freighters in the first place, because if one freighter can't take all the cargo, well, you have several more freighters that can. And actually, initially, even before I made the first Pocket Trains video, I did have an operation which was kind of like that, where I only had one freighter working each individual line, and that was all fine and good until we got, like, we had, sometimes we might have had a massive rush of cargo coming in, and the, the freight cars would have been waiting in the yard for a long time because the freighter was on, like, the complete, the, the other side of the world, and they were, like, waiting for the freighter to make its way back to the yard and actually pick up its cargo and then head back again, and the cycle just repeats where it's like, the cargo, the freighter can't keep up with all the cargo. It leaves some of it behind waiting for a long time for it to come back. So then it picks up the leftovers, but then the cargo has built up again. And it's like this whole cycle. Of course, yeah, something like that. One freighter can't keep up with it all. And that's where the benefit of having long trains comes in. And that's also where you have to be a bit strategic about when you make trains longer because... I mean, if the demand is there, if you need to um, have, if you need to like have more capacity to keep up with the traffic flow, yeah, in a case like that, long trains would be beneficial, and shortening them would not be very convenient in something like that. Like having like a mandatory shortage where trains can only be a certain length. Like if I could only run one or two freighters on each line. Like, that might be fine on some lines, but on the Paris to LA line, it wouldn't be long before there would be this massive traffic jam, and the few freighters that I can run 
wouldn't be able to keep up with it all, and I can't add more because, like, it's against the law, or something like that. So that's why I think that uh, making, like, making a mandatory train length limit is not exactly a very good idea, because, like, on the one hand, uh, yes, long trains shouldn't be done excessively, but on the other hand, they can be done right, and that's kind of what I'm trying to portray in this video, or in this, like, in this game, basically. Like, this is kind of an example of how long trains can be done in a positive way. Like, they really can be beneficial by, you know, preventing a whole, basically, this game's equivalent of a shipping crisis, because now I don't have to worry about a massive backlog of traffic, and of all this, like, cargo building and building up, and the trains not being able to keep up with it. Because now that I can add more trains, I can keep up with it. And of course, that doesn't mean that I should keep adding train after train after train after train. Because, of course, then, when you do that, of course, then that's when you're starting to get into it more for the money and not so much for the efficiency. Or I guess not so much for the other benefits, I should say. But, um, yeah, I think that this can be done well, like, when it's done right, when it's done in moderation. And that said, would I recommend this strategy to other Pocket Trains players? Kind of, yes and no. Because I would recommend it to players who, like, already have an intercontinental rail operation, where it's like you already have trains running from, like, one continent to another, and you already have, like, an operation in the hundreds of thousands, or even in the millions... If you have something like that, it might be beneficial to run more than one train on the same line and increase your capacity and run more cars at once. Also because then you can have shipments that are like traveling across the whole world. Like you might have something going from Alaska all the way to Russia and stuff like that uh, has pretty big payloads that can definitely generate a lot of coins. And that's part of why I've been able to make such a profit from this because there have been so many of those big ticket car loads that I've been transporting on these longer trains. But of course, money should not be the only reason. I mean, it's a nice perk, but it definitely should not be like the sole driving factor. I agree with that. And that said, I would not recommend this um, strategy if you have like a smaller operation like if you're still operating in only one or two continents and you're still expanding your network out to other parts of the world, and if you're still like only running steamers or expresses or like the, the smaller type engines, not so much the big capacity freighters, uh, then I wouldn't really recommend this at much as much because I do think that like uh, the network needs to be like able to handle trains as long as these and that's another thing that i've heard criticized about long trains that they need to be um like the rail infrastructure needs to be able to handle them and to some extent i do agree with that also that like rail infrastructure does need to be able to handle that and that kind of applies in this game too like you can't have these mega trains running when it's like on a small railroad when you only have like a small network in one or two continents rather than a multi-million dollar operation that is literally running worldwide, intercontinental. Obviously, this game runs on a much larger scale than real railroading, as you can tell. But, um, yeah, I do agree that rail infrastructure does need to be able to handle these trains, but there are some lines that are better handled for long trains than others, like the triple track, concrete tie, Kearney subdivision, um, like something like the Kearney subdivision, would be a lot better suited to handle mega freight trains than just an old single track line that's street running and it has a bunch of steep gradients, like something like that wouldn't do as well. But of course, that doesn't mean that you have to generalize that to all American railroad infrastructure. And that doesn't mean that you should like eradicate mega trains from existing anywhere at all whether they can handle it or not. Like, I don't agree with that. I do not think that mega trains should be made absolutely extinct. But at the other, on the other hand, I agree that they shouldn't be done, like, absolutely everywhere just because. Because, of course, problems can arise either way. So anyway, uh, that was kind of my pocket trains video. 
about it was more so about my opinions on PSR than my opinions on pocket trains. But uh, I kind of talked about pocket trains in the original video. It's a good game. Check it out if you haven't. It's actually a really good mobile game, despite the common stereotype of mobile games being bad. Like, this one's actually pretty good. So, yeah. Uh, thanks for listening to me ranting. Sorry about that. <laughs> but um, if you could kind of tell from this, uh, yeah, I do agree that when done properly, trains that are made this long can be beneficial but only in, like, moderation. They shouldn't be made extinct, but they shouldn't be done absolutely everywhere. There can be a balance in between. That's the main idea that I'm trying to come across here, and I hope this game kind of helped to convey that. But anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope this makes you want to play Pocket Trains. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's a good game. But, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you sometime later.